Gran Turismo 7 is finally with us, the first full entry in the series in almost a decade. Even if Gran Turismo Sport came in the middle of that and blossomed into a much broader game than it started as. Just as with Gran Turismo 6, GT7 is around the turn of a generation, but where that game launched exclusively for PlayStation 3, strangely a month after the PlayStation 4's release, Gran Turismo 7 is out for both PS4 and PS5. So as a cross-gen release, it's another fascinating game to look at to see how developers are bridging the generational divide. So let's dive into the biggest talking point and get it out of the way, ray tracing. While this featured heavily in the game's initial reveal, seeming to promise ray trace lighting throughout the game, that's simply not the case. Ray tracing is only ever active when you're not driving a car. So that's in the garage, in Brand Central, in GT Auto, in replays, photo mode, and even in the few moments in the race opening where the camera cuts back and forth before settling into a three second countdown and you get to take control. Now there is good reason for this. Polyphony obviously want to prioritize 60 FPS racing, and when ray tracing is active, the game is limited to 30 FPS. I also feel that beyond that, there's actually diminishing returns in visual fidelity when ray tracing is active during live gameplay. Some aspects are improved by ray tracing, so you've got more realistic shadowing and the way that light bounces within a car's interior and transfers different colours and shades to the interior. That is really fantastic. However, the raw reflections that you see on the outer body of the car, they can be pretty rough. They're resolution low and heavily aliased whenever there's a meaningful background to view in a car's panelling. It's quite shocking when the rest of the image is in full 4K. The area where it really shines though is for still imagery in the photo mode. Here when there's no pressure to keep to a certain frame rate, Polyphony can really increase the quality of the ray tracing and have more light probes, giving you a fantastic ability to capture cars in reflections. Turn off ray tracing and those cars just aren't there. Moving on from that aspect though, and GT7 has quite clearly been built around the foundations of GT Sport and on the bedrock of the PlayStation 4, and it feels like there's much more that could be gained from a fully native PS5 game. There's certainly a variety of improvements on PS5 though, for things like texture filtering, quality of the reflections, the motion blurring, and so much more, but you can also see the areas where it's restricted or kept in lockstep with the last generation. The LODs, the level of detail that is, the bounds of this are pretty similar between PS5 and PS4 Pro, and so you'll often see the detail pop into existence on cars as you get closer to them, or even the hard edge where a shadow is getting into its higher detail version as you're racing along. It's a shame that this couldn't have been extended further from view or masked in other ways. Track detail, and specifically the scenery around the circuit, is another area where, while it's good, it certainly still feels beholden to the PS4. And again, that's not to say that this game looks bad. In many ways, it looks fantastic and there are significant strides being made since GT Sport, where Polyphony has, for example, been able to implement the dynamic time feature through the day, and in limited cases, through a 24-hour cycle. And there's also the return of dynamic wet weather conditions. Polyphony's fastidious approach to rendering both of these is admirable, even if there's some frustration still to how they're limited on a track-by-track -track basis. Let's take a quick diversion to talk about loading times, because they are practically instant on PlayStation 5, where, by comparison, loading up a large track filled with cars can take over half a minute on PlayStation 4 Pro, and more like 45 seconds on PS4. The older generation consoles also feel more sluggish when just navigating the main menus, and in particular, they take quite a bit of time to load up your garage and switch between the cars. All of this, of course, is just the difference from stacking an SSD up against an old hard drive. In terms of raw resolutions, the base PlayStation 4 is running at 1080p, the PS4 Pro at 1800p with checkerboarding, and the PS5 is at native 4K. All three consoles are targeting 60fps, and by and large the performance is fantastic, that the PS4 is always going to be the console that struggles first and the most. When you're racing in the dry, the only track that I felt any kind of frame rate drops on PS5 is Deep Forest, which hitches when dashing through the tight and twisty inner section of this track. On other circuits, maybe there's one or two frames dropped here or there, but it is barely noticeable. 
Over on PS4 Pro and PS4 though, they're both still very good, but you're much more likely to see them dip and stay in the mid to high 50s for several seconds if there's a cluster of cars in front of you on track. Now of course, that is the ideal kind of bread and butter situation for all of these consoles, but we wanted to kind of stress test this, and so the best way to do that, as always in racing games, is to go for a wet weather race, load up a big track, and fill the grid to the maximum of 20 cars. All systems remain perfectly playable in this situation, but the frame rate simply cannot hold to 60 FPS on any of the three consoles. Instead, across the board, we're seeing frame rates in the mid to low 50s most of the time, sometimes in the 40s, with the base PS4 the hardest hit of the three, and the one that is most regularly in the 40s. However, it is worth saying again that this is very much the exception rather than the rule for what you're going to experience throughout this game. Even so, we feel that Polyphony could do a little bit more in regard to scaling of detail and dynamically rendering the resolution to address this issue and maybe get a bit closer to sticking to that 60 FPS target at all times. This might be something that has to wait until GT8 though. All in all, Gran Turismo 7 plays great across all three consoles, and it looks fantastic on them as well, on the PlayStation 5 in particular, where the ray tracing will combine with the photo modes to make for some truly stunning imagery to emerge over the next few weeks. However, it's also fair to say that there's plenty of headroom for further technical refinement, and eventually for a PS5-only game to stride ahead from this initial effort on this generation. That's all that we've got for this video, and if you want to see more Gran Turismo 7, we've got our video review up on YouTube as well, and there are written companions for both this and that review over on thesixthaxis.com. Hopefully you've enjoyed what you've seen, and so before you go, I'd like to ask you to click the like, the bell icon, subscribe, all of the usual YouTube things, and hopefully we will see you again soon. Goodbye!